Welcome back to the channel guys. So in today's video, I'll be introducing you to the React Native Gesture Handler library along with the React Native Reanimated library. So as most of you would know, the animated library that comes built in with React Native already has a pan responder system. Why would we then want to use the React Native Gesture Handler library? So in a nutshell, if you think about it, the React Native Gesture Handler library basically taps into the native UI, thereby giving us a better performance. When we use the pan responder system that's available on the built-in animated library in React Native, it basically works on the JavaScript thread. So every time you pan, it sends over the data across the bridge to the UI side. So now we know that we're going to be using the pan gesture handler from React Native Gesture Handler because it gives us better performance and works on the native UI thread. Then where does reanimated fit in? To understand that better, let's go ahead and build out a box animation using the pan gesture handler and the normal animated API. So here in front of me, I have an empty React Native project that I've created with Expo and I'm running it on my iPhone 10 simulator. One thing to keep in mind is that when you're using Expo, you don't need to install the React Native Gesture Handler or the React Native Reanimated API as they're included by default. In case you decide to use React Native in it, you will have to install them separately. So here, let's go ahead and first create our box. I'm gonna remove this text here and pass in a view. Let's style that and say styles.box. Let's close out that view and let's just create that style here. Let's give it a height of 100, a width of 100, and a background color of red. There we have our box. I'm just going to get rid of a line item center. Next, let's go ahead and import animated and pan gesture handler. So we're going to import an animated from React Native. And we'll import pan gesture handler from React Native gesture handler. Let's also import in something known as state, which we'll talk about in a short while. Now let's wrap our box with our pan gesture handler. See here, we'll say pan gesture handler. Since you want this view to animate, let's change that to animated.view. Now the pan gesture handler takes this on gesture event, which will map to a method called this.onGesture event. Let's replace this function with export default class and let's extend react.component. We'll also then have to pass in a render method and wrap the return with the render. Next, let's go ahead and create our constructor. Inside this we'll call super and create our first property called this.translateX. We'll create a new animated dot value and start by giving it a value of zero. Next, let's create our on gesture event. So we'll say this dot on gesture event. We'll use the animated dot event. So the animated dot event basically takes one array and inside that array, we access something known as native event, which is an object. And inside that we want to access translation X and we'll map that translation X to our this dot translate X that we created. Now come down here in animated dot view we want to map this translate x to our view. So let's change this style to an array. And inside that, we'll pass in something known as transform, which in turn takes an array. And inside that, we want to map translate x to this dot translate x. Now when we pan on this object, we see that it translates on the x-axis. But when we release the object, we want it to animate to one end. For that, we can access another property that's available on the pan gesture handler, which is called on handler state change. This in turn, we'll call a method that we'll just create and let's just call that method on handler state change as well. Now above our render method, let's create this. So we'll say on handler state change is equal to, and it takes one parameter, which is the event. And inside this is where we'll use the state that we had imported. So we'll check if event dot native event dot old state is equal equal to state dot active. That is when the box is dragged, the current state becomes active. But once the box is released, the old state becomes active and the current state becomes end. So by doing this, we're sure that the user has dragged the box at least once. Inside this, we'll just use animated.timing. And actually before we do that, let's just move this box to the center first. So here, in the container, just add a line item center. Come back here to the top. And inside timing, we want to animate this dot translate x to a value which is zero so that it comes back to the center. And let's set the duration to 5000. Remember to start the animation. Now if we drag the box, leave it, we see that it comes back. Let's just make that duration 1000. So as of now, we're running this animation on our JavaScript thread. So let's change this over to the native UI thread by using use native driver. So here in our animated dot event, we'll pass in a comma and say use native driver and set that to true. Similarly, in our animated dot timing, 
we'll say use native driver and set that to true. So basically now our animation should be working on the native thread. We're going to open up something known as the performance monitor and monitor the JavaScript frames. As of now, we see that there's no drop in frame, but let me try and block the JavaScript thread now. See, I've just pasted in a componented mount inside which I run a for loop every 1000 milliseconds. So let's save that out. So as you can see here, our JavaScript frames are dropping, but we're running an animation on the native side. So I don't think there should be a problem. Let's try it out. And we see that the pan is working perfectly. But when we release the box, you notice that it pauses for a short while before the animation begins. Let's see that again. And there. So why is this happening if everything is working on the native side? The reason is that animated.timing, though it's using the native driver, actually needs to send this start command across the React native bridge. When this command is sent across to start the animation, that's the time we get that pause when our JavaScript thread is overloaded. So this is one of the problems that React Native Reanimated plans to solve. In that, we'll declare all our animations up front, and when we start the animation, which is termed as a side effect in React Native Reanimated, we won't see that small jerk, and it'll work really well, even on old Android devices. So let's go ahead and see if we can change this code to use React Native Reanimated. Come here on top, instead of importing animated from React Native, we'll import it from Reanimated. As I told you earlier, this is already included in Expo by default. Next, in the animated.event, we can get rid of this use native driver. And coming down here, I'm just going to get rid of this animated.timing for now. Let's save that. And we see our pan is working with the pan gesture handler. The only thing we need to do now is to trigger the animation once we release the pan. Let's also get rid of this componented mount. So the code for reanimated is actually a little verbose for a small animation like this. And it can be a little daunting when you're starting out. It actually gives you a very low level control of your animation. And that's why you end up writing a little more code. So firstly, on top here, we destructure some values from animated. So as you can see here, we have a couple of values. Set is just a set and value. Condition is when you want to check a condition. Equal to add is self-explanatory. Spring is when we want to run the spring animation. Clocks is something new, which is introduced and reanimated. It's a special type of animated value that we can start and stop when we want to run an animation. We'll see how they work shortly. Subtract is a normal math function subtract. Defined is when we want to check if a value is defined. Value is the same as animated.value. And event is similar to the animated.event that we used here. As and when we use them, I hope they become clearer. So come down here to our constructor. Instead of directly mapping our translation to this.translateX, let's just create a couple of more values. Here we'll say const drag x is equal to a new value, zero. Since we've extracted our value from animated, we can get rid of animated from here. Then we create a new value called state. And we'll set its value to minus one. This is the state of the gesture handler. When we set minus one, the state is undetermined. So now instead of mapping it to translate x, let's just map this to drag x. And let's map the state to the state. Now we need to declare our animation so that we can pass it into translate x. So we'll set this dot translate x is equal to We'll check for a condition by using condition that we had imported. What condition does is it checks the first parameter that's passed in. If that's true, then it runs the second parameter. Otherwise, it runs the third parameter. So the condition we want to check is if the state is active. So in the first parameter, we'll pass in equal to using EQ rounded brackets inside that we'll pass in state and then we'll pass in state dot active. So when the state is active, we want this block to run. Otherwise, we will want this block to run. State active, state inactive. So when the state is active, we want to calculate the new pan value and return it to the translate x. So here, let's just create a new constant, call that trans x, and we'll just set it equal to a new value. Here, we'll use set to update the value of trans x to the value of drag x, and then we'll return trans x. Once the pan is complete, we'll just say set trans x to zero and return trans x. Let's save that. And if we pan, our pan is working, but it's not going back to zero. That's because here, where we're using our on handler state change, now we don't need to map this to a new function here. Let's get rid of that. And instead of on handler state change, let's just map it to our on gesture event. 
since we've declared all our animations in one place. Now let's try it. And once we leave it, we see it snaps back to the center. So now here, we want to run an animation, which springs it back to the center. For that, I'm just going to pick up the spring animation, which is there in the examples of reanimated. We don't need to understand exactly how this works, but we can just use it when we want to use a spring animation. As you can see, it's much longer than just using animated.spring. That's because it gives us a finer control over the animation. So let's copy this out. Come back here and above our class, I'm going to paste that in. So as you can see, it's called run spring and we'll use this to animate our box. Once we finish up our code, then we'll talk about this animation. So come back down here in our constructor. Let's go ahead and create our clock. So we'll say const clock is equal to a new clock. Then in our state inactive block, instead of directly setting trans x to zero, let's get rid of that. And we'll say set trans x. We'll then check for a condition like we did earlier. And here the condition we want to check is if trans x is defined or not. So we'll use defined, pass in trans x. If that condition is true, then we want to run the run spring animation. Otherwise, just return it to zero without the animation. So in the run spring animation, the first parameter is the clock that we have to pass in. Then we need to pass in the value which needs to be animated, which in our case is trans x. The third parameter is the velocity. We'll just leave that blank for now. And lastly, we have to pass in the destination point which is zero since we wanted to come back to the center. So let's call the velocity drag VX. And we can extract this out from our pan gesture handler. Here under translation X, we can say velocity X and map that to the drag VX. Let's go ahead and create drag VX. So here we'll say const drag VX is equal to a new value, which has a default value of zero. Let's save that out. And as we see, the animation isn't really working the way we thought it would. Now this brings us to the run spring function. Here, we know the parameters that it takes. It defines a state in the beginning, which has a finished velocity and position value. It then has a config, which is the same configuration as the animated.spring in the animated React Native API. Once we set up the configuration, we come down here and we run a block of code. In this block, the first thing that's checked is if the clock is running. If the clock is running, then just return zero. Otherwise, we just want to reset the animation, start the clock, and then run the spring animation. Once the animation is finished, we stop the clock and return the new position. What happens though is that either the spring animation does not complete, that's why the clock is not stopped, or the intermediate pan states causes this to trigger and the clock to start. That's why we must always call stop clock here with our clock. Now if we test this out, you notice that the animation is working perfectly. Now it's time to test out if this JS frame drop affects the animation. So here in our componented mount, I've just pasted in the for loop again. As you see, the frame rate has dropped. But if you try the animation, you notice that it works perfectly. So I know the code for this is a little verbose, but I just wanted to introduce you to the reanimated library. This is a little hard for me to understand as well, but I hope this clears up a few doubts of yours. And for a better understanding, don't forget to check out the original talk by Christian Maguera about why he created Reanimated. I've added a link for the same in the description. As always, thank you for watching.